The Axis of Evil made an ideological comeback in 2022, and it's here to stay. The war in Ukraine is challenging the way we see sponsored terrorism. Gone are the days when the U.S. was center stage at defining the world's enemy. But now, the U.S. is grappling with a new world order that doesn't seem too interested in picking fights with the world's sole superpower. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea are playing out the long-haul version of evil. In this video, we're breaking down what the axis of evil looks like today, the question of American hegemony, and how China is fighting new wars. Let's get started. George Bush's State of the Union address delivered in 2002 still lives on today. After all, it changed the face of American hegemony forever. The former president had hard launched the country's new project. It was a time to increase pressure on the rogue states, which threatened world peace. So who are these rogue states? Bush identified three countries that could own weapons of mass destruction or hand them over to potential terrorists. These countries comprised the axis of evil. Back then, the three states that America had identified as sponsors of terror were Iran, North Korea, and Iraq. At the same time, Bush had made a promise on behalf of America. The champion of world peace would do everything in its power to weaken such regimes. But more than two decades later, a new war is burning in the world. In December 2023, the Wall Street Journal would give the axis of evil another flair. The article titled, The War in Ukraine Has Created a New Axis of Evil, opened up a new Pandora's box in the world. It's true that America's idea of the axis of evil has evolved. It's just not about the weapons of mass destruction anymore. As of today, Iraq is a failed state. Iran is fighting a new wave of sanctions and North Korea remains isolated from the world. America has new challenges at its forefront. Its three greatest hegemonic rivals have joined hands to burn Ukraine to the ground. Russia, China, and Iran have renewed their diplomatic ties, and they're increasingly anti-imperial in their struggle. Notice that we're using the word anti-imperial and not anti-American. The new nexus of power might be in Europe, but their ideological fight against America seems like a worldly affair. They're not fighting the Biden administration solely. They're challenging the ways America has typically exerted its imperialism. From the infamous Iraq invasion in 2003 to its alleged role in African military regimes, America has found itself trapped in a sticky situation. So it's only fitting that the axis of evil has had a makeover too. But there's one question that remains the question of American hegemony. Bush's groundbreaking speech on American responsibility sparked a vigorous debate worldwide. Why does America feel the collective responsibility to maintain world peace? Non-Western academics and critics questioned Bush's methodology to exert Pan-Americanism worldwide. They insisted that the protection of the axis of evil isn't collective. It's about preserving the American hegemony in the current shift of politics. The Russia-China-Iran nexus threatens American power from all fronts. The increasing anti-American sentiment in the world is cultural. There's a strong effort to de-dollarize the world. Powerful countries like India have avoided making America's problem its own. Suddenly, it's hard to see Bush's America in 2024. While the uncontested American authority still exists, it's under more significant threat by the axis of evil. Here's why. Enjoying the video so far? Give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Well, think about Iran, Iraq, and North Korea. When Bush had labeled these as terrorist regimes, the countries were hardly structurally powerful. Their economies were mostly in shambles, owing to the sanction regimes or otherwise. Largely, the axis of evil was small, poor, and very reminiscent of failed states. But that hardly mattered back then. Bush didn't want to be blackmailed into negotiating with governments that were anti-American. Today, the axis of evil is about the belligerent states of Iran, North Korea, Russia, and China. These countries aren't failed states on their own or in collaboration. You can perhaps make an argument about North Korea or Iran, but their economic progress has hardly halted their geopolitical ambitions. If anything, the mighty Russia has to now turn to North Korea and Iran for military supplies to fight its war in Ukraine. China is the second largest economy in the world, 
and it's been accused of funding war in Europe since 2022. Now, we don't have to state the obvious, but the axis of evil isn't a bunch of mix-and-match, rogue failed states. They are powerful militaries with strong economies. And much to everyone's dismay, they are expansionary states. Which, of course, is a picture-perfect American nightmare. Such implications force us to look beyond the axis, too. Countries like India and Turkey might not be cutthroat enough to make it to the Axis, but their support of expansionary regimes is about silence and complicity in matters like Ukraine. The threat to American hegemony isn't centralized anymore. It's not even a question of whether the U.S. can attempt to invade countries like China or subvert Russia's nuclear programs. Both states are powerful enough to shield themselves from America's invasiveness. What does this say about American power? Of course, it's being challenged in new ways. Look at the love story between Iran and Russia. As the U.S. continues pushing sanctions on them, the two allies have strengthened their economic partnership. Iran and Russia are reliable trading partners, from weapons to staples like food. China has found a new, cheap avenue in Iranian oil, too. All in all, North Korea is still backed against a wall, but it's found a very willing buyer of its artillery in Moscow. And it's a partnership that's thriving as Putin continues the war in Ukraine. Plus, a new stream in the Middle East redefines the axis of evil too. The Israel-Palestine conflict. Recently, Iran and Russia have come together to support the Gazan cause. At the same time, the US is pouring billions of dollars into the Israeli military and defense budget. Such complications aren't new to the Middle East. But this time, they're certainly heightened as countries like Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, and Jordan have a stake in the conflict. Many see Israel as an extension of the wave of American imperialism that came after 9-11. In particular, Russia and Iran are pursuing a very specific narrative. They believe the U.S. destroys allegedly rogue states that refuse to live by American rules. And well, all eyes seem to be on conflict-ridden Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. The U.S. faces a new challenge since the axis of evil is powerful and expansionary, and it's more ideological than ever. The superpower grows weak in the oil-rich Middle East, while Russia is striking more amicable ties than ever. For decades, the U.S. has relied on its complete hegemonic and economic control to push the Middle East into compliance. With other world powers at their disposal, countries like Iran can skip even the toughest sanctions to fuel a war in Europe. And there's another continent in question, too. Like Russia and Iran, China and Asia are emerging alliances, too. China is currently pushing for a multipolar world order that doesn't centralize one hegemonic power. Beijing's campaign against the dollar hegemony has not been about Xi Jinping himself. It doesn't matter what its true ambitions are, but China isn't marketing itself as the world's alternative superpower. It's calling itself the keeper of the new world order that seeks to empower the marginalized. For once, it gives its counterparts a chance to fight a big war against who they deem a historical bully, America. Bush might have regarded weapons of mass destruction as a means to overturn American hegemony. But wars are hardly just about sophisticated weaponry anymore. They're also about narratives and perceptions. China's aggressive de-dollarization campaign is one example. Since the 2008 economic crisis, Beijing has rallied against the power of the U.S. dollar in front of its allies. But more so, the new wars are largely fought on the Internet. China's disinformation networks like Dragon Bridge have very specific orders. Eliminate anything even remotely anti-Chinese Communist Party. Now, that's a very vague statement. But when the United States drags the Belt and Road Initiative for being an economic predator, that's also anti-CCP. In the fight between Chinese hegemony and the dollar, the latter seems to be losing. The official BRICS narrative on the internet can be defined in one line. The US dollar is the killer of economic stability. In the absence of American economic power, China is the only viable alternative. Such implications are narratively driven rather than just merely theoretical. Now, it doesn't seem like the new axis of evil is solely interested in ending American hegemony with weapons. The fight is cultural. Indeed, the resurgence of the power nexus poses new threats to historical American exceptionalism. Yet, picking a battle against the superpower has never been easy. 
But do you think the American hegemony is at a crossroads of being challenged? Let us know in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and watch our other videos as well.